Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to this week's Picks Against the Spread, brought to you by our friends once again over at MyBookie. They also sponsored yesterday's Film Room episode on Bradley Chubb and why I think he looks like a young Khalil Mack, so check that out if you haven't already. But for now, let's talk about all three of these games. Uh, Really intriguing matchups to me, starting with the Dolphins going to Indy to take on the Colts on the road. Miami is coming off a bye week, which you do have to consider when looking at this game. Uh, Ryan Tannehill is also back. Uh, Shoulders obviously not at 100%, but they feel like he can give it a go and at least try to save their season on the road. Uh, The Colts, at least as of late, I feel like they've been playing like the best team in the AFC South, which is saying something because the Texans are on a seven game win streak. Um, But just when you look at that offensive line, I actually broke that down also a couple weeks ago. You look at the offensive line, the run game, Andrew Luck is playing better than literally he ever has before. Frank Reich, uh, his play calling has been magnificent. The defense is still the defense, but you know, as, as long as this offense has been performing like it has, I feel like this team is incredibly dangerous. That being said, Ryan Kelly's injury is a major factor on this game. Uh, he is He's had a stellar season at center. He works really well with Quentin Nelson uh, in terms of blitz pickups, uh, picking up stunts and games. Um, they, that, that is a key part of their offense to not have on the field. And so when you factor in Tannehill coming back, uh, you know, taking a whole bye week to get healthy and prepare, uh, Gar- the Dolphins are healthier now than they have been in, I don't know, maybe two months now. Um, and the fact that one of the the centerpieces of the Colt offense, no pun intended, is out for this game. Even though Indy is favored by seven and a half, and even though they are a really good team, I kind of get the sense that this is a little bit of a trap game for them. Um, you know, Miami is not a bad team. They are a dangerous team. At least when they were healthy early in the year, they were an exceptionally dangerous team. Uh, I mean, shit, they even took down the Bears with, a, with Brock Osweiler, quarterback. So it's not like they're devoid of talent here. Like they, they do have legitimately a, a pretty good amount of talent to draw from. So even though, yes, I do believe the Colts are still probably going to win the game just because of how they played as of late. Um, with all the circumstances surrounding this game, both injuries and bye weeks and all that, I, I get the sense that it's going to be closer than seven and a half. I would personally expect the Dolphins to lose by somewhere between three and five, maybe even getting within a field goal, uh, you know, even schematic matchup wise. Uh, if you took both of these teams at full health, uh, the Dolphins are kind of a problem for them. If you're betting straight up and you still want to take the Colts, that's fine. Cool. I'm, I'm totally good with that. I would probably do the same thing. But if you're looking for an underdog to beat the spread and have a really nice payout, uh, you could do a lot worse than the Dolphins this week. They have a lot of things going their way. Um, it's risky. I'll give you that. It's risky. But the payout is pretty juicy. I'm I'm probably going to put between 25 and 50 bucks on that because I, I could make a pretty decent chunk of change off that. Uh, moving on to our number two game, we got the Cardinals visiting the Chargers. The Chargers are favored by 13, and I kind of like them to cover that. Uh, they've been one of those teams where if they've had pretty good side, like, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 plus point spreads this year, um, I, I've been feeling pretty comfortable with them covering for most of the year, and usually they've been coming through for me. So, Uh, Just taking into account that Joey Bose is back, uh, taking into account that they run the ball really well and the Cardinals cannot stop the run. Uh, Derwin James has had a phenomenal year, and I think just kind of him patrolling the middle, which is where Josh Rosen likes to work in the middle of the field. Uh, Schematically and talent-wise and coaching-wise and game script-wise, I mean, everything to me adds up for the Chargers to win by two touchdowns, which would cover a 13 point spread. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. Um, It's kind of the opposite bet of the Dolphins. If you're looking for a heavy favorite that you want to bet on to cover rather than a pretty decently sized underdog to cover, the Chargers would be probably the safest heavy favorite this week, at least to me, to cover a rather large spread. Uh, And that brings us to our final game. A very, very intriguing matchup, not just in terms of betting a spread, but just on the field. The Steelers going to Denver to take on a sneakily dangerous Broncos team. And yes, even though they are a four and six ball club, I think they're better than most four and six teams that you'll ever see in the NFL. Uh, There are a couple bad throws from Case Keenum and a couple bad decisions from Vance Joseph from being, you know, the opposite six and four, maybe even better. Uh, They have a lot of young talent, uh, really, really good young talent between Bradley Chubb, who obviously I just broke down on this channel yesterday. Cortland Sutton, I think, is a future star in this league. Philip Lindsay already is a star. 
Uh, Josie Jewell's been playing well. I mean, this whole rookie class is absurdly good. Uh, it's probably the best rookie class overall that I've seen since the Seahawks uh, when they got that Bobby Wagner, Russell Wilson kind of back-to-back. Uh, I think Bruce Irvin was in that class as well. And with that, just a phenomenal 2012 class for Seattle. I think the Broncos, when you look at this class, we're going to look at it the same way. Really, really strong young talent on this team. Uh, also, just, just looking at Denver in general, it's a very hard stadium to play in, especially once you start getting into the colder months. Mile High is rocking no matter how good or bad the team is. Like they, It is a diehard fan base. They will be loud no matter what. Uh, the Steelers typically don't play well in Denver. Ben, Big Ben, I believe, is 2-3 and three over his career in Denver. Uh, it's, just, it's a hard place to play, especially against a talented Broncos team. And so even though the Steelers are favored by three, I kind of like this as another upset pick for the week. It's a very much a, a swing for the fences type pick because you have to have faith in Vance Joseph and Case Keenum not screwing it up. Um, but, you know, just looking at the money line, looking at the spread, looking at the potential payout you can get here from betting on this dog, I like it a lot. Again, it's not safe, so maybe you want to kind of diversify and counterbalance your bets this week with maybe a safer pick. But, man, if you really want to swing for the fences and try to get a big payout this week, you could do a hell of a lot worse than, you know, Broncos as a three-point dog to a, I don't want to say a vulnerable Steelers team, but... Historically, they have not played well in Denver, so I I really like that. It's again, it's a very risky slate this week. Uh, if you want to bet on the Dolphins to cover against a good Colts, uh, Colts team, if you want to bet on the Chargers to cover a really big 13-point spread, and if you want to bet on the Broncos to cover a three-point uh, dog to a really uh, championship-caliber Steelers team, again, a lot of risks this week, but potentially huge rewards. Uh, I don't really blame you for betting either way on any of these games, but that's just personally how I'm betting. But if you do maybe want to lessen the blow a little bit, play with a little bit of house money uh, on these spreads, if you do go to my book, you enter promo code BRETT in the description in the link below, you do get a 50% deposit bonus, which you can use towards these bets. So it... If you maybe you don't feel 100% confident on it like I do, uh, again, you know, you're, you're kind of playing with house money. You lessen the blow to yourself. Maybe put your your actual deposit on some safer bets to diversify and build that bankroll. You know, there's a whole bunch of ways uh, that you can play it. I used my own promo code, you know, early in the season to get a pretty fat deposit bonus. I used that to build a bankroll, and I've just I've just been kind of rolling off that for the rest of the year. Uh, so again, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, you don't have to bet super big underdogs every week you can play it safe and just kind of chip away at it and just make some extra money for christmas however you want to go about it totally up to you uh the world is your oyster but if you do want to get that deposit bonus if you do want to bet on these games this weekend just go to that link down below enter promo code brett get your deposit bonus and go have some fun and also while you're at it let me know what you guys are betting on as well when you collect that bonus because there's a whole bunch of really interesting lines besides these three games uh ravens uh, favored by 10 and a half Eagles favored by five and a half over the Giants uh, who've been kind of resurgent lately uh, you got Browns and Bengals and uh, the Ohio Bowl you got Bengals favored by three in that really really interesting lines this week so let me know what you guys are doing I'll chime in in the comments and give my thoughts as well of course uh, and I'll be back next week with another film room episode and more picks against the spread for week 13 so I'll see you guys next week and until then later